The day and age of personal responsibility seems to be coming to a close. And if you thought that was bad enough, a lot of people seem to be picking up the mantra instead of, I will do it myself and I will rise to the occasion. So many people out there seem to be just saying, govern me harder, daddy. And with that, it's time to talk about the Epic Games payout that they have to pay to the FTC as well as apparently people who were scammed out of their money, blah, 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 blah. Epic Games is the absolutely massive, massive financial success that was known to create the games such as Fortnite. Dauntless is another one of their games that actually uh, the household plays here. And I wanted to take a moment to talk about this because, oh, good lord, this story is absolutely insane. And ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let's get into this epic games over on MSN. MSN.com. Why am I on MSN.com? Because, well, the article seems to explain things well. But Epic Games, the developer of Fortnite, settled violations of child privacy laws. Ooh, sounds dangerous. Uh, with the FTC for $520 million after the FTC alleged children were exposed to dangerous content, including sexual harassment and bullying. We'll get into that in a minute. The fine represents a significant settlement for a company that brought in over $9 billion between 2018 and 2019. Epic Games, the developer and publisher of the video game Fortnite, will pay $520 million in fines to settle with the FTC over violations of Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, uh, COPPA. The FTC alleged that Epic paired children and teens with strangers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. Give me a minute. Children's team was exposed them to dangerous and psychological uh, traumatizing issues and failed to introduce adequate uh, adequate parental control systems. Now, this one here, I may have an issue with, but I don't because it's not up to your game companies to raise your children. Protecting the public and especially children from online privacy invasions and dark pattern is a top priority for the commission. No, it's not. I'm no, it's not. I've seen your public school system go um, anyway. And these enforcement actions make clear to business that the FTC is cracking down on these unlawful practices. The FTC chair and Lana Khan said in a statement. Epic will pay two fines, including $245 million fine against Fortnite's in-game store and, re and refund system, and another $275 million fine to address the child privacy concerns. And that seems to be the end of it. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a good old-fashioned game of parents aren't paying attention to what their kids are watching on the television, right? This is something that goes all the way back into my day where parents actually had to be act take an active role into what their children were consuming as content. Now, the content in the modern day tends to be video games. When I was a kid, it was cartoons. My parents used to sit there and watch the cartoons with me. Now, my dad used to tell me they were stupid and he'd get up and walk away. If the cartoons weren't stupid, they were turned off. My parents were told me, you're not allowed to watch that cartoon anymore and you need to go away. Here's something that I find absolutely hilarious is that children were exposed to dangerous content including sexual harassment and bullying you mean parents 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 the people who are in charge of their children which no longer anymore it's it's big daddy government govern me harder daddy govern me harder daddy god oh i love that big government anyway uh Parents who are supposed to make sure that they understand what their children are getting into, the games that they're being involved in, and how they are supposed to play these games. And there's a, well, well, Royce, do you have kids? Yes, I have four kids. Well, do they play Fortnite? About every day. And you know what? My wife and I tell our children, one, you're not allowed to have a headset. Two, you will not be in any game where you are allowed to talk to another person. Okay, that's, that's period. That's games across the board. And three, you will not have access to a game where your mother and I will pay money and then you can just sit there and rack up the charges on us. It's almost like being a parent could have avoided all of this, but govern me harder, daddy. I don't want to be a parent, 
I just want my crotch goblins to run amok and do what they want to do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this opens up the floodgates to just about every online game and gaming service out there. Some of them pretty good and some of them pretty not so good because they just suck and the developers need to pull their heads out of there. Anyway, but this opens up the floodgates. Okay, and essentially what they're going to use here is they're going to start using this thing, like, but think of the children. <laughs> yeah, the thing of the children. Anyway, so thinking about the children instead of thinking about the parents, and that's ultimately the problem of our society is everybody says think about the children and nobody ever says think about the parents until the parents, you know, have a political opinion that you don't have and then, you know, you try to stick CPS on it. Anyway, I digress. But think about the children, ladies and gentlemen. Think about those poor children who are just trying to have a good time playing their games while their parents are over there, you know, swiping left on Tinder, hoping that they can find something better than their significant other while they're popping Xanax, drinking beer, and Lord knows, probably getting their Fauci ouchies for about the 10th time. <laughs> but think about the children. Right? These children were given a video game and their parents just gave them carte blanche to do what they were supposed to do. And now a company who puts out that game, and don't get me wrong, they absolutely hired psychologists in Epic Games to figure out how to make the game addictive. Of course, you know, every company does this. This is something that goes back for a long time, but nobody goes down to the chain grocery store down the street. In Colorado, it was King Supers for me. And uh, Iowa now it's the Hive He and the Fairway, and then you got your Safeways and your Albertsons and all of these different companies that have actually hired corporate psychologists to figure out well what makes people want to buy stuff. But nobody goes after and says, "Hey, my chain grocery store made me fat, stupid, and lazy," right? Because well, honestly, people don't understand that that those that when that water spritzes over the vegetables in the grocery store. It's not because it keeps the vegetables fresh, it's because the human eye is more attracted to what would be considered the morning dew dripping off of a vegetable, right? It's hardwired into us. Why do I make that comparison? Why do I make the comparison about the duplicitous natures of grocery stores and, this, and the psychologists that they've hired to make purchasing and buying the things more addictive to you? Again, food is something that's necessary to life. I absolutely understand this. However, some of the garbage products in stores are absolutely not necessary to living a good life or even a healthy one. Those practices have now been adopted by the gaming sphere, right? And instead of taking personal responsibility for yourself and your children, these parents have decided that it's much more worth their time to let their children spend their life savings by having access to their credit cards, which I <laughs> cannot believe parents are doing this. They're letting their children have access to their credit cards. They're letting children get into online lobbies with people that, you know, God knows what they want to do with those children. And I sit here and I wonder to myself, quietly alone, with all of you here watching my channel on YouTube. So quietly alone with all of you. Shh, this is an intimate moment. It's quiet. We're alone. We're alone. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Google's not watching us. Why are these parents not being looked at as negligent? They are letting their children into games online with carte blanche to their money. And then on top of that, so that's financial irresponsibility to raise children, right? And then on top of that, they're letting their children into God knows what kind of lobbies with the creepiest people out there. Now, when I was a kid, I was in these online lobbies, but my parents talked with me and they said, hey, you know, if somebody ever says this stuff to you, you're to get off the game and you're to come to us and you're to, rem to remember what the person's name was. Tell us about it and we'll call the cops. Because my parents actually talked with me about this stuff. And this was back when online gaming was a brand new thing. This was back when Halo 2 was a thing, right? Well, now I do the same thing with my kids. I just say, hey, no headsets allowed. You're not allowed to talk with anybody on the game. And you are not allowed to correspond with anybody on the game. And you better not because we know the game systems that our children aren't. And we actively check to make sure that they are not adding friends. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're seeing here is a company paying hundreds of millions of dollars because parents don't want to be parents anymore. So mommy and daddy, I hope that you guys love that 200, what, $245 million 
that you won. I hope you get to pop a few more Xanax. Go drink your beers and your wines. And don't get me wrong, I love my beer here. Uh, but I absolutely hope that you love that money that you got because no amount of money is going to fix the fact that you're a lazy parent and you're just blaming it on Epic Games. Ladies and gentlemen, these parents deserve to be shunned from society and shamed into oblivion. Epic Games, you ran the way that corporations have run for decades. And you know what? As duplicitous as that is and as irritating as it is, you don't deserve to pay $245 million simply because the parents out there don't want to pay attention to their crime goblins and they'd much rather sit there and go on TikTok and make sure that all the Chinese spyware is taking their day anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy and I look forward to seeing you all right back here on the channel on Sundays where I go down in the comments sections of every one of my videos and I read your comments in a special live stream called Sunday Coffee. That's right, if you guys come onto my channel and you dedicate time to me, I make sure to dedicate time to you every week and let you guys know that I am actually reading what you're saying to me and I am actually responding to you guys. In addition to that, don't forget to check out Friday nights here at 8 p.m. Central. That is Iron Age Nights. We are bringing on authors and, well, some movie developers and comic book writers to that are telling good, proper stories again, getting away from the corporate media and all of the political agenda that seems to have been enveloping it. That's right, if you guys hate things like The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, well, I got guys who are writing books, and they're fantastic, and they're trying to make sure that storytelling rises to the occasion again. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. I look forward to seeing you here next time. Cheers, everybody. Thank you all for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys never want to miss a notification for the channel, go down in the link in the description and click that button to follow me and support me over on Locals. It's free to join, but that's where you can support me with money if you so choose. Also, don't forget to click those Rumble and Odyssey links so that way we can get over there and keep that growing. And until next time, cheers, everybody.